Hi everybody, how you doing today? Hey, today I got a special uh, video for you. It's about shooting the Panasonic FZ300 with absolutely no external software. Just out of camera. And I have got the sweet spot for you. I have a video compiling all the uh, positions that you need to set your camera up into program mode to have some amazing fabulous pictures coming out of it in no time yeah so after I get done talking to you I will have this video matter of fact we're gonna play this video right now hi everybody how you doing today well today I'm gonna show you my best P program custom mode and this baby will do you um, an amazing job without using any photo processing software so I'm going to start here you're going to turn your camera to program mode and it's not going to say custom It's not going to say custom it's just going to say program mode but I'll show you how you get to that custom so the first thing you're going to do is you are going to click the menu button and as you can see it says photo style and as you can see it, you can barely see it but it says custom right here you're going to click on that you can use either click on it here and as you can see custom standard I know it's a little hard to read but these are my custom settings for the program mode to give you the best optimal picture out of this camera without any photo software so as you can see the very top part here is your contrast I have it set at plus four S stands for sharpening which is at plus two and then this next one it says NR minus three that's your noise reduction you want to reduce that and then of course your saturation is going to be plus four never run any of these to the maximum because I found it just makes it worse these are optimal and I'm going to show you just how to do it when you get done putting these in here you hit the set button and now you have set a custom style photo for your program mode and I'm gonna go through some of these other photos here to help you uh, make sure that your camera is set up kind of like mine okay so what I'm gonna do is this these one two three four there's five icons here I'm gonna call these chapters okay and as you can see over here are the pages that are on chapter one there's seven pages okay so we're gonna go through each one of these and uh, kind of quickly so you can see where I have everything set at the metering mode I have it on center it works good if you're gonna do some um, uh, uh, landscape you might want to go to the full but I've shot with this on landscape too and it's worked pretty good my burst rate is set at medium because if you go to high it's a chance that the camera is going to choke uh, especially if you're in the f8 uh, aperture because it really slows down quite a bit and um, anyway I found that the medium is the best all around burst rate the next one is 4k photo you're gonna make sure that you are in the top one 4k burst okay all right you're not gonna use auto bracketing now we're gonna move on to the next page self timer don't mess with it highlights do not mess with that 
leave the dyna eye dynamic off. Now I set my eye resolution for extended. There are four other levels in there, but I found that this works the best for me. Okay. Post focus off. That's page three now. Now we're going to go to, oops, we have page four. You can, you can try HDR if you want, but my settings are almost set for HDR. It's something you're going to have to experiment with. Uh, there's nothing here. There's nothing there. We're going to page five and you don't mess with this. Um, shutter type. I have mine set for auto. Uh, I don't mess with this. Uh, if you're shooting with a flash, you want to mess with these. Next one, ISO limit. I set my intelligent ISO limit to 400. Because I found that if you go to 800, it really starts to get a little grainy, especially if you don't have software. So I suggest you keep it at 400. Believe me, it's plenty. And all the photos that I'm going to show you after here are all shot out of the camera at exactly 100 ISO. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on. ISO increments, one third. Uh, the fraction, you're going to want this on, okay? It's in on in auto position because it's an auto. The eye zoom, you do not want on at all. You want it off. Every photo that you're going to see, I have shot in optical only. Because once you step into the... Uh, um, the Intelligent zoom, you're going to need software, okay? But you will be amazed at the photos that I've caught with a 600 millimeter zoom, okay? Continue on. Uh, we leave that totally off. Uh, this is off. I just use RGB unless you have uh, like a Photoshop or something. You might want to try the photo. Um, stabilizer. I always have it in that in that top operation mode okay that one right there uh, I leave this off I leave this off and we're back to photo style we're gonna go to the next one now here's something that I found out um, uh, well this is this is for the video side and I'll, I'll go through this real quick I also leave this in center uh, weight lighting center weight okay uh, don't mess with that leave the dynamic off eye resolution I do extended it does assist it uh, in some ways it does definitely work good the um, the fraction compensation auto you want to have this in auto okay you want the eye zoom off you want the digital zoom off, conversation off, and I leave the flicker at 160 because, you know, I shoot 4K 30 frames uh, on my, uh, and that's the maximum you can have for 4K video, unless you drop down to 1080p, but then you'll lose all that, you'll, you'll drop from 10 bit to 8 bit, and it's just, it's better to take a 4K you know, unless you're doing something fast. Mic level. Um, display is on. Mic level adjustment. I have 3 plus dB on the uh, mic level. I have the limiter on. Uh, it's a mic limiter. And you want that on. Wind noise I have off because I use a shotgun microphone with a wind muff. And so forth. Now we're going to the next one. Oh, we're going over. And we're going to go to the next one. Now, as you can see, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> um, let me get this back to one. Sorry about that. Custom memory set. That's four uh, buttons on your camera. Silent mode I leave off because once you go into this, you're in um, electronic shutter. So, and if you're going to try to catch something fast, you might as well hang it up because that, that thing will be bent. Yeah, it's, 
the, the certain situations if you're just shooting photos of flowers or stuff like that uh, maybe people not moving very fast you want to I would recommend that you leave it off I have this set for uh, this is going to be chapter 3 okay right here and we're on page 1 and this AF AE lock I leave on okay and um, this one is shutter autofocus and I leave that on all right let's go to the next page now these are normally these are set already in camera once you get beyond the uh, end of the third and fourth these are pretty much set in camera but we're gonna go through them so you know uh, I leave that off I sensor autofocus on I leave this pinpoint autofocus time short this is for that little but you won't be using it because on the custom focus point if you don't have that programmed into your camera please find the custom focus point on my YouTube channel which is just back a few and that custom focus point is the best it works the best it gives you the best results and as you will see in some of the photos I have taken uh, pip for this one this is chapter 3 remember page 3 now I lift uh, the autofocus sys lamp sometimes in a dark situation it will come on to help you uh, focus direct focus area off I have it off because sometimes if you touch your nose against the screen and uh, when you're looking through the eye view, that that uh, focus area or point will go wherever your nose touches so leave that off that's why I leave it off uh, focus release priority release AFMF I want that on so I can do uh, autofocus and manual focus with the side wheel on the left side of the camera lens manual focus um, you see the wheel on the side here that is what that is for okay and that is um, for that wheel the manual focus assist display is pip meaning when you turn that wheel the manual wheel over here it will automatically go into pip and blow up that picture so you can see exactly where you're at on sharpness MF guide I leave that on peaking I leave that on it's for the manual focus I don't use the histogram anymore I don't use the grid lines because I've been shooting long enough I know how I want my pictures to be and I know in memory where the grid line is it's just one more obstacle in your uh, photograph that uh, you will have to subject uh, to when you're shooting your your uh, pictures all right page five center marker I leave that on so I know where the center is highlights are off I use my zebra pattern 2 which is and this is this is really a, a good thing to have on as you can see I have the zebra pattern 2 and it is oops I'm sorry it is set oops sorry about that let's go back and I have it set to 80% oh no I'm sorry 105% I have zebra 2 set for okay and um, that's where I leave it at because I want it to show the lines just as it's beginning to show too much highlight so that's what I do remember 105% let's go back I leave mine in Zebra 2 motor kind of live view I leave off constant preview I leave off on to the next exposure meter we definitely have that on uh, the dial gauge is on that's your little thing down at the bottom that shows where you're at you know as far as your exposure goes uh, I leave these both in these position I think there's another position for each one of these I just leave it at the full picture frame uh, monitor info display is on that so you can see all the stuff inside your viewfinder when you're looking record area I leave it while recording a uh, video okay record area 
this is the camera setting. If you click it, you could put it on the video camera, but I, I use the camera setting. That's what I set it at, that one right there. Um, remaining, uh, I leave it on the camera setting, okay? Um, auto review, I'm not even sure what some of these are. Oh, it's just a duration. Like I say, some of these you don't even, uh, FN button, I don't mess with. Side button setting is going to be autofocus slash focus. It's autofocus and focus. The side button, that's the one over here on your lens. All right, going to the next one. Zoom lever. Now you can see that you have two different types. You have a solid one with no lines on it. And then you have one with little dots on it. That's the one you want. And I'll explain. When you're zooming with either the side one or the one up top here, every time you just click that lever, it, it'll move to a certain increment with every click, like every, every push over. But it also will zoom if you hold it over. So you get both in the same position. So I recommend you leave it in these positions because this is the best. If you just want to uh, zoom in a little bit without guessing, it'll it'll take it to a certain spot and then it, that's where it'll be. So it's the best of both worlds. I would recommend both being uh, the side lever too also. Zoom resume is off. Uh, I have it on preset. I don't mess with these usually except for these two up here the dial set I don't mess with this either it's whatever the camera was programmed with the video button is on that's the red one up here at the top your eye sensor I have it in low that's uh, when you put your hand up here she'll go off and come back that's all it is Touch settings. Um, I have the touch screen on, but I have the touch autofocus off because that's if you're taking a picture and your nose touches that screen, it's going to set the focus over wherever your nose touch. So I would recommend leaving these two off the touchpad autofocus and the touch autofocus off, and the other two on. You'll be fine. All right, let's go to the next one. Touch scroll is low um i think that's yeah it's uh, how your wheel d does you know i never really noticed but i leave it in a low position menu guide is on and now we're going to the next uh there is something i want to talk to you about live view mode i have it at 30 30 uh frames per second the monitor display is um, is this. You can change the colors or contrast or anything. I recommend leaving just the way it is. It does a really pretty good job. Illuminance, I leave it on automatic like it is now. You have three different levels. Uh, one, two, three. One being, I think, the brightest and the three being, well, let's see here. Yeah, one being the brightest there. For this video, I have it in the three. I mean, in the automatic, I'm sorry. Economy, right now I have it maxed out. Sleep mode, I usually have that set for five minutes. So if I'm walking around and I don't see a picture, the camera's gonna go to sleep. And this I usually have, but due to, for this video, I usually have it at two minutes. In two minutes, that live view is gonna shut off and all you got to do is just touch that little shutter button just a little bit and everything comes back on again. Okay. So that's my take on that. Uh, USB, I haven't done that. Uh, the connection, absolutely not. The feet, uh, menu resume is on. You can pick a menu background color. Uh, menu information I leave on. This is in chapter four. Language. Uh, 
Edition. That's the firmware. Uh, I leave this off. This exposure compensation reset, self timer, I, I, um, I have on, but auto off. You can reset the whole thing just by going here. Um, and truthfully, that's it because the rest of this stuff I don't mess with. I don't do pictures in camera. This is where you would go to do pictures in camera. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, well, I think that's just for raw processing. So I don't mess with this one at all. But that is my program mode, and uh, it absolutely works wonderful. I've gotten great pictures out of this. I also want to show you something else. Uh, on the side of your camera, there's a little button at the bottom under the wheel. This is your AF macro, uh, macro zoom, and then you can turn it off. I've always shot my camera with the AF macro because sometimes you want to get something close and you won't be able to do it if you have it off. So I just leave it on all the time. That's where I leave it. And my macro is uh, extreme telephoto photography. It's a little different. I don't even use the macro on this camera. I use extreme telephoto. I use the telephoto lens for my macro lens. <laughs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> okay. Also, as you can see here, this is your um, exposure control. It's a little button up here. And right there, and you use this knob to move your exposure control down darker. Most of the pictures that I've shot have been in one third stop down from uh, zero. I would say 90% of the pictures I shot were there or even one a uh, two thirds stop down. You'll have to look through the uh, thing to, to see what you like, okay? But this is what I do. I, I Right here is a good all around. As you can see, my ISO is set at 100 fixed. Okay, and I'm gonna get out of this pressing the button here and then if you want to change your aperture your aperture here all you have to do is just rotate this thing just rotate it and I can tell you I want you guys to try this um, go to 8.0 as you can also see I leave my camera uh, for autofocus continuous unless I'm doing uh, you know, like landscape, but even landscape, you can still do this for just a quick shot. Go to 8.0 on your aperture and shoot some landscape, and you'll be amazed at the pictures that come out of it. Okay? I'm finding out more and more that I can use the full 8.0 uh, aperture f-stop successfully with great landscape pictures or landscape scenery pictures so that's a, a little uh, bonus there for you all right let's get out of this um, yeah so uh, as you can see I also want to show you this program what this what this is doing okay when you use the aperture and you go to change your oops hang on a minute here Okay, I'm at 8.0, 7, 6, you see how it's still there? But I think when you get the 4, it disappears. No? There, 2 point is when it disappears. Now you can pick anything, well, you can leave it at 2.8, and the camera will pick your aperture. But I have found the sweet spot for this camera is 4.0. That is the sweet spot. It's half the distance of the of the camera, and you still get good depth. But if you want a little more depth, you just you know just move it up. Uh, pressure shutter, so you you can bring this up because you have to bring it up first before you move it. Let's see what happens here. 
Hmm. Anyway, that's what that gold bar in the program stands for. There you go. Now the camera is going to uh, just... And even, even if you have it set at 4.0, it will change if it gets too bright or too dark, but it'll try to keep it in that 4.0. Uh, you can even try 5.0, but if you're going to start shooting birds and moving things, leave it at 4.0. It's a good all-around aperture. And also, um, when uh, I've learned that I have removed the polarized filter, do not use the polarized filter because it will knock a stop and a half off and that will really make the camera struggle if you want to catch a bird in flight. Okay? Um, so leave the polarizer off. I just have a UV lens on this. I, I can use a polarizer because I have software, but you won't have software. So just leave a polarizer off. It's... I have a uh, UV filter on the front of my lens because I go through bushes and s sticks and trees and I've had it catch my uh, uh, my sunshade and actually go inside the lens. So if it wasn't for the UV filter, it had been scratched by now. So that's why I have a UV filter. Yeah, they say uh, you really don't need one these days. But you know what? I have found absolutely no... Uh, problem with a UV filter. Make sure you get a good one, a nice one. I think I use a K and S or S and K. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's a good uh, filter. So there's my take. I shoot great pictures with it. Uh, the 4.0 on your aperture is uh, a great all around camera shot. Um, um, that's it. That's my that's my uh, my custom setting. And now I'm going to show you the fabulous pictures I've gotten out of this camera. It took me a week to to figure out where this uh, custom <laughs> this uh, custom setting had to be. Yeah, it was quite the. Uh, I had to play with them quite a bit before I finally found that sweet spot where you get absolutely gorgeous pictures out of this camera without no software all right thank you for watching now back to me <laughs> thanks everybody if you have any questions please ask so what'd you think um that was uh as fullest as i can explain that custom standard it's a standard custom photo shoot uh, uh, settings and um, they work great I also want you to remind you that you want to run this camera in continuous focus I found that this continuous focus is truly uh, helpful as far as getting your picture sharp uh, within since you I do burst I don't know if you do uh, that's why I shoot my pictures a medium burst and when you use the uh, uh, continuous focus, it truly does uh, make a difference on getting uh, good, sharp pictures. So it's a little little reminder there, okay? Um, otherwise, are we helping people huh? get to where they need to get to? Giving is something that I find extraordinary because people are hurting. And just giving a little is all you need to do because they will find their faith more with their Creator. Just from the few words that you say or lending uh, uh, five or ten dollars for them to get what they need to get. Remember, the moment is the most important time in space. That moment is the most important because it can change everything for that person or for whatever you're doing. So think about the moment. 
and make sure that you hold back on the ego because if you let it fully gallop I promise you that eagle is going to buck your ass right off oops buck your butt right off that horse and you'll feel about that tall anyway my take on it is uh, remove the ego send them in the back seat and tell them not to, to stand up in front of you because he will get you nowhere except in the harder situations that you're already in so yeah, uh, subscribe, like, and share, and uh, enjoy the video. I got some great pictures out of this camera. They're really, really going to be surprising to you. So yes, subscribe. You never know what the next turn is going to be here on this channel. Thanks, everybody. Have a beautiful day.